Column tools are usually used to create medium-sized elements. Typically, their default stitch type is satin stitches, and there are three different types of columns. The first one that we're going to look at in this video is a column one. To look at that, we're going to go to our input toolbar. It is located directly below the edit mode, and it has two red lines and three black lines crossing over it, and that's kind of indicative of how the tool works. For a better demonstration of this, I'm going to open up a graphic that's going to give um, some good shapes to digitize over. It's located in the graphics folder loaded with Design Shop on local disk C in the designs folder. And I'm going to change my files of type to all graphics. The one I want to open now is columns.bmp. I'm just going to shrink this down um, to something a little bit more manageable, say about five inches across. And now we can take a look at these tools. So the column one tool, I'm going to click on it to select it, is a column tool. It is used to create satin stitches typically, although it can be used to create lots of different types of stitches. It's used for creating irregular shaped um, elements. If I wanted a more regular um, even shape, I might use a single line to do something like that. To begin with this, we're going to create the end of the column first, or the end of the element first. So I'm going to start with two endpoints, and again, the column one works in pairs of points. The line between those points dictates your stitch direction. So I'm going to start with one, go to the other end, get the other one, and then I'm going to continue one side, then the other, one side, then the other. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to begin with a left click, and then I'm going to move across, and I'm going to create, again, that end of that element. I can continue with pairs of points, one side, then the other, one side, then the other, pairs of points, the line between them will dictate the stitch direction. If I want a curve, I can add a curve. If I want a straight, I can add a straight, and it will do an angle, and the, the pairs of points do not have to be the same type of point. Once I'm done, I hit enter, and I generate my stitches. And notice that my stitches typically run across the form, and they run about perpendicular to the edge. Let's change the color of this element so that we can see our wireframe lines being bright blue, our threads being kind of this bright pink. We can look and see how the lines between those elements are dictating those stitch directions. As I am digitizing my form, because I'm determining stitch directions I'm doing, I'm paying attention to where those pairs fall. I can create the exact same shape with very different results just by changing where those points fall along that edge. And in this case, this would probably not be so good because I'm going to bunch up my stitches and it's probably going to ripple. So if I can create, sorry about that, Let's zoom back in, some more even stitches, it's going to be a little bit better for my final sew out. So if I'm looking across a form and I'm changing stitch directions, and it's almost easier for me to look at this as if it were a curve. So let's do a curve real quick. I'm going to start on one side, then on the other, right click to create a curve, right to click to create a curve, left click, left click, hit enter to finish that shape. Sorry. As I'm doing this, let me get my notation tool up here. Getting the color we can see. There we go. <clears throat> I try to aim my stitch directions towards essentially the center of that circle so that if I'm aiming in with all of my stitch directions it's going to fan my stitches across my form a little bit more easily. Same thing, let's clear this out and let's scroll up a moment and let's look at this top piece again same thing here. As my angles come in, I'm always aiming towards the middle of what I'm doing. So I'm coming across, this is going kind of straight across here, so I'm going perpendicular to the edge. Here I'm coming up at an angle and I'm almost creating, if this were, let's say, a picture frame, my line would come right across where that miter would be. Same thing with right here. So I'm really trying to line up those stitches and make that as even as possible. 
Let me get out of my tool. Clear that off. Grab my editing tool, come back down. All right, so let's scroll down here and take a look at some of these forms. I'm going to pan across. And let me zoom out just a touch. And we'll look at this E. So we know how to create a shape. We start on an end, one side, then the other, one side, then the other. Hit Enter to complete the form. The trick is not to bow tie yourself. That's obviously not going to sew so well. So one side, then the other, one side, then the other. So let's take a look at doing something a little bit more real. For something like this E, I might start with a walk stitch, attach my material to my backing as quickly as possible with just a little bit of a, a walk underlay there. I'm going under the entire shape. And then I can grab my column one, start on one side, go to the other. Start on the other side, go to the other. And you'll notice that I'm overlapping a little bit. Well, underlapping if it's a word. Digitize back up with my walk. I'm traveling to avoid a trim. Hit enter to complete that shape. So I'm always hitting enter to change from one type of element to the next. One side, then the other. Here again, I'm kind of aiming towards that middle, paying attention to if I were a picture frame. Left clicks for those sharp angles coming down. Hit enter, and the stitches will fan throughout the form. And if I put this into 3D, you can see that I'm going all the way throughout the form, transitioning all of those stitches through those angles. Right here, it's a little bit long for a satin, so it's becoming that random patternless fill to make sure that I have those stitches that stay inside that form, stay inside that material. Let me delete these, get them out of the way. Let's come over here and take a look at how to deal with this A. So again, I might start out with just a walk stitch to, to attach my material to the backing. And now I have some decisions to make. Do I want to do this crossbar now? Do I want to do it later? If I wanted to do it now, I might do it first. And one side, then the other. One side, then the other, coming across. Holding Alt to make sure that that stays level. There we go. And I've angled these stitches. Um, it looks a little bit weird right now. It's going to get covered up. The reason that I've angled these stitches is that if I have stitches that go over the top of that and they are perpendicular to the stitches underneath, they can pull a little bit of a gap. But if I have them fall at slight angles to each other, they're going to be a little bit cleaner. All right, so let's take this out of 3D for a moment and we will finish this up. Come one side, then the other. This is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. All the way up here, come across, all the way up here, come back down, finish that up, hit enter, and now my stitches are fanning all the way through the form. So that's one way that you could accomplish an A like this. I'm going to move this over so we can see a couple of examples of it. If I go into 3D, you can see that these stitches are fanning throughout the form. They're going all the way through, and it looks okay. If this is really small and I start to pull a little bit of a hole right here, I may want to consider doing this a different way. So I might attach my material to my backing, do that crossbar, one side, then the other. There we go. And then travel back over. So another way to do it would be to perhaps have some overlap at the top. So I might do one side, then the other, come up to about here, come in, and then now I really start to come over a little bit more, come up to the top, come over. Hit enter to complete that shape, and then I'll come over here and I'll start doing the same thing on the other side. One side, then the other. And this way I can kind of divide this out, coming pretty far across, coming back down.
hitting enter to complete the form. If I look at this in 3D, now I have a line that comes down the middle. So I could take this as one option. And finally, so we have kind of a miter. Finally, what I might do is I might consider capping this. And this would all depend on the size of element that I'm digitizing. So I might, again, attach that backing to the material with that walk stitch. There we go. Grab my column one, do that crossbar. Come across. All right, now let's travel up and back down the other side, avoiding that trim. Go up one side, oh sorry, create the end. Come up to about where, in this instance, the line would come all the way across. And we're gonna create a separate shape for that. So I'm going to come across hit enter, then I will grab my walk tool and I will travel up and now I will come back down with a column. The other side I'm gonna overlap by a stitch, maybe two, sorry, get back out of that, not what I meant to do. Make the end, grab my column one, make the end, overlap by a stitch or two, Kind of gives it like a little hat. Hit enter, and then I'm gonna follow down the other side. So create the end, one side, then the other, one side, then the other. Hit enter, and now I've got a third way of dealing with this A. So I could navigate all the way around, rotating my stitches. I could miter it, where I have that line coming down the middle, or I could cap it. And if this was a much smaller A, the cap would be completely satin as well. So if it was really small, you might not even notice um, that it's becoming, or it wouldn't become a fill because it would be small enough that it wouldn't snag and pull out. So three different ways to handle that A. All with a column one, same thing with an E, column one. All right, let's take a look at this curve. If I had a curve like this, I'm gonna start on one end, one side, then the other, and it doesn't matter which way you could do it. I could have done the outside in or the inside out, doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Bisect that curve just like we did with a walk in another video. Right click to make that curve, come all the way over, left click, left click, hit enter. And if I take this out of 3D, you can see that all those stitches are aiming towards essentially the center of the circle as if it, they were um, spokes on a bicycle wheel. Now let's zoom out just a bit and let's deal with this S. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start the other direction this time just to show that we can do it. Finish the end, bisect that curve, right click, right click to create a curve. Here's that sharp transition that goes from this curve to this little straight element. So I definitely want to do that with a left click to create that nice transition. Left click, left click left click, left click to start into this curve, right click, right click, we're bisecting that curve, left click, left click. I hit enter to complete the form and the stitches fan throughout. Now if I have something that is completely irregular like this, I can do it, I just have to line up all of my pairs of points. Let me zoom in here, I think this is a little bit easier on myself. I'm gonna start at one end, Okay, so now I'm kind of guessing how far over am I going to be. That looks about right. Left click, left click to create that transition. And here's another transition, so I need to have a pair of points here. Left click, this is a curve, so I'm going to right click. Here's another transition. Left click, this is still the curve. Right click, come back down. Left click because of the transition. This is still a curve up here, so right click, and then I have a transition here, so I've got a left click. Come up here, left click, and again, the same thing. 
left click. Every time one side transitions, I have to have a pair of points. So in just this area, you can see how many pairs of points, and I'm going to hit enter to complete this, I have set up just to do that little bitty bit. For something like this that is completely irregular, it may be easier to use a different column tool, and that might be a column two. The column tool does each side differently, and you don't have to have the same number of points in each side. They don't work in pairs, and the stitch direction is uh, dictated independently. So column one, pairs of points. Think about a little bit like a railroad track where each pair of points comes across the form. Let's zoom back in and we'll bring up those wireframe points again. So they're coming across the form, pairs of points. The pairs don't have to match. I can have different points. I can have a triangle and a circle. It doesn't matter. And then as you hit enter, it will complete the form. As I'm digitizing, I start on one side, go to the other, Start on one side, go to the other. When I hit enter, it will exit on the last point that I input. So there's my propeller. It exited on the last point I inputted. If I wanted it to exit on the opposite side, so I start on the bottom, go to the top. Bottom, top, bottom, top. But man, I really wish it would exit down here. I can hold control when I hit enter to shift the exit point down. So we'll exit on the opposite side. Or if I forgot, I could just select it and drag my exit point down. So these are still very editable shapes. But that's how you would use a column one to create lettering, to create different types of forms, um, and pretty much any smaller to medium size satin stitch form that you would need. For irregular shapes, you might consider a column two, which is discussed in another video.